hi guys i know lots of you are sitting your biology paper one tomorrow so i really wanted to give you some last minute advice as to how you can maximize your point scoring and make that level nine an achievable goal and some of my points will be quite basic but i hope you'll find them all really helpful so my first point is write legibly i.e write very clearly just so you know, the people that mark your papers, they tend to be teachers. And I'm sure you know from school that teachers are extremely busy people. They're under quite a lot of stress and they're going to be marking your papers as quickly as possible because really the reason they do it is for some extra cash. So please be aware of that and that therefore you need to make their lives as easy as possible. So try and write as clearly as possible so they're not hunting around in your answer. Linked with that is use keywords. I think I've said this many times before, but in the genetic modification topic, for example, if you look at lots of mark schemes, rather than having a full paragraph of how genetic modification is carried out, you'll see that there's a mark for saying restriction enzyme, which is obviously used to cut out the gene and cut open the plasmid. There'll be further marks for talking about ligase enzyme used to join the plasmid and the gene together. Once the plasmid has the new gene inserted, it will be known as a recombinant plasmid. And in this way, it's acting as a vector. And the mark scheme will actually just be a list of points. So yeah, obviously, make your answer make sense, useful sentences. But make it easy for the teacher. They won't. They probably won't read your full paragraph. They'll literally be like, yep, they've said restriction enzyme. Yep, they've said plasmid. Yep, they've said ligase. Yep, they've said recombinant plasmid. Five marks. So make it as easy as possible for your examiner to see your marks. My third point is knowing the difference between describe and explain. People get this wrong all day long. Describe is say what you see. So if it's a graph, you need to say that as one variable increases, the other one increases or decreases. Obviously, it will depend on what the data is. Explain is saying why. So this is where you use science to back up your answer. My next point I wanted to make is that for most of the biology papers, you will find that you can basically blurt out what you have revised. However, some questions appear to be slightly more tricky because it's not initially obvious what it is you're supposed to be writing. And that's because you tend to find that an awful lot of the information you actually need to answer the question is hidden in the question itself. So don't forget to read every single word of your question paper. Don't go straight to the question being asked. You want to read the blurb at the top. I know it's really tempting to jump down, but it's so important that you read all the information. Point five, obviously go through and make sure you've answered every question. If you leave a blank space, there's obviously no way they can award a mark. So even if you have no idea, just have your best guess. Do not leave anything blank because like I said, you won't get any marks for that. And you never know, one of the things you might think is really silly might still be worth something. My sixth point is to obviously go through your paper carefully, turn to the back, make sure there aren't any questions on the back. Too many times have I heard people not answering the final question because they think they've reached the end of the paper. You need to look for the phrase end of paper or something similar to that to know that you've definitely got to the end. So when you go back, check that none of the pages were stuck together, check that you've answered and seen everything. For my next top tip, it's basically me making sure that you can answer Corm's questions because you don't want to be losing a mark here. You can be pretty much sure you'll be asked to plan an investigation during your exam. So let's make sure you're going to do that in the best way possible. And if you've seen my other videos, you, you'll know that I don't actually enjoy using Corm's and I'm going to personally use a variables layout. And I'll show you how to do that now using this example. The garden bench is painted with a fungicide solution. This prevents the wood being decomposed because fungicide kills fungi. There are different fungicides that can be used. Design an investigation to find out which fungicide is best at preventing the decomposition of wooden logs. Your answer should include experimental details and be written in four sentences. So we are interested in looking at different types of fungicide and which one is best at preventing decomposition of wooden logs. So I'm going to start by writing my variables. So just first of all, remember that an independent variable is the thing you change. The dependent variable is the thing you measure. And if you're struggling to remember this, Google the variable song. It goes um, something like the independent variables. No, I'm not going to sing. 
to the tune of if you're happy and you know it clap your hands and that will really help you remember lastly control variables the things you keep the same so let's ask ourselves what are we changing here well we're going to be changing the type of fungicide so i will use a variety of different types of fungicide next up my dependent variable what will i measure well i need to measure the rate of decomposition of wooden logs but obviously that's going to be quite hard to measure so the easiest thing for me to do here is measure the mass and the one which will have decomposed the most will obviously have the least mass so i will measure the decrease in mass of the wooden logs then the control variables i will keep the following variables the same and you want to list as many as possible here so obviously I need to apply the same volume of fungicide. The log needs to have the same starting mass. And obviously they must be the same species of tree because some trees will decompose naturally faster than others. And then lastly, I will control the temperature, moisture and oxygen levels. So lots here, lots of control variables. And then to get the final few marks, first of all, you need to state a time frame. I will measure the logs new mass after one week and the very last mark is for saying i will repeat and calculate the average and by following this template you can guarantee you'll get full marks so i have quite a few inquiries about how you know how to plot graphs what needs to go on the axes and so i just want to make sure that you're going to draw your graph properly basically so looking at this example, farmers have been growing GM, so genetically modified soybean and corn for a number of years. The table shows data for soybean and corn grown in the USA from 1996 to 2014. It shows the percentage of each crop that is GM. So we have list of dates and the percentage of each crop that is genetically modified. And we're comparing soybean and corn. Plot a line graph of the data on the grid, use a ruler to join the points with straight lines and it's worth six marks so it really is worth knowing how to do this. So notice we've got a line graph and it needs to be joined by straight lines. So for me, it's up to you how you do this, I'll give you two approaches. How do you know what goes on the x and the y axis? So the real way of working this out is by understanding which of your variables goes on the x and the y axis. And you need to know that the thing that you are changing, so the independent variable, goes on the x-axis. And so what are we changing here? Well, we're changing the year that we're examining. We're going from 1996 all the way through to 2014. So in this case, it will be the year. And then on the y-axis goes your dependent variable, which is the variable that you are measuring. And what am I measuring here? Well, I'm measuring the percentage of each crop that is GM. And like I've already said, use that variable song on YouTube to help you if you can't remember the independent and dependent variables. And so we're effectively ready to plot and make sure you obviously use units. So I already said year here, percentage of each crop that is GM. So I've just copied out the table headings here to help me with my axes. And so we now need to pick a sensible scale and obviously you want to occupy as much of the paper as possible so we need to go up to 2014 so I can see that this scale here will fit quite nicely so going up in big squares by every four years and I've got to be careful because the last year is 2014 which is only two years after 2012 which is why that needs to go here so be careful there they're trying to trick you out and then I need to look back up have a look at my percentage of each crop that is GM the lowest value here is 3, the highest value is 94. So I need to go up from 0 to 100, so I think that will just be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 and 100. And I'm ready to plot now, but I'm now ready to plot. So in 1996 I had a percentage of each crop that is GM of 7, at 2000 it was 54, 2004 was 85. So use crosses to show your particular point. Then it was 92, 93, and lastly 94. Use a ruler. I can't use a ruler on the iPad, but get these lines straight. You definitely need a key, so I'm going to draw it over here so that it's out of the way. And then we're going to change colour so we can differentiate between the soybean and the corn. So I'm now plotting for corn. And again, use a ruler to link your points. Finish your key. And that graph there is worth six marks.
Right guys, I hope I've given you lots of tips and things that you can do to improve your chances of getting that grade nine to score as highly as possible. We wish you the absolute best of luck. Remember to come follow me on Insta if you want to come complete some short quizzes because I try and upload those as often as possible. And let me know how it goes tomorrow. Good luck.